So this was the first ayat which clarified this matter that Isa alayhi salam was not crucified. This was the first Quran ayat. And the second Quran ayat is in the third sipara where the third quarter starts from. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالُوا اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَىٰ إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ وَمُطَحِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأَحْكُمُ بَيْنَكُمْ فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and before this he actually, there are a few verses as well regarding this. But this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh Isa, indeed I am going to take you completely and I am going to raise you towards me and I am going to purify you from those who have disbelieved. مُطَحِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And I am going to make those who follow you above those who disbelieve until the day of judgment. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also mentioned the fact that Isa alayhi salam was raised all on that day in which there is no doubt about. And every person should be compensated in full. That which it has earned and they will not be wronged. So, tawaffa, wa'uffir, it means full, compensated in full, to be taken into full. So here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will take you completely, it is referring to the fact that he is going to take the soul of Isa alayhi salam, but not, I'm going to raise your rank. But here by saying, mutawaffiq, I'm going to take you completely, body and soul, it denies or it rejects their beliefs. And it means that Isa alayhi salam was actually taken body and soul. He was taken completely. And in the seventh para it's mentioned, like I said, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ They say this means that when Isa alayhi salam has died as well. And they use a hadith in Bukhari Sharif. But again, the same meaning there is that Isa alayhi salam is saying that when you took me completely, body and soul, and I'll mention the ayat in 7th para, uh, that will also be beneficial to us. What they say in that Quran ayat, it mentions, That on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Isa alayhi salam, that did you tell the people to take you and your mother as a God, along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Isa alayhi salam will deny this and he will say no. He will say, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ That as long as I was amongst them, I was a witness over them. مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ And when you took me up to the heavens, then you were a witness over them. Isa alayhi salam here is not saying that I do not have no knowledge about what they did after me. Because Isa alayhi salam, he is going to come back down, he is going to know. He is going to know about the cross, he is going to know the false beliefs that people had regarding him. So he's not going to say, I have no knowledge about what they did after me. But here Isa alayhi salam is saying that how they got to this point, how they took me as the son of God, I have no idea. For as long as I was present amongst them, they were worshipping one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you took me completely, after that I have no idea how they got to this belief of me and my mother being a lord. So that is another important point. And one last point I will mention it. It is slightly technical as well. But there are people who say that no. Here this Quran ayat, they are very, they insist that mutawaffika means death. Because wafat, as we use in Urdu, it can also mean death as well. So, if we are to accept this argument, as mentioned in Marif al-Quran, that okay, yes, here it could mean death. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying that you are going to die at the hands of the Jews. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this to Isa alayhi salam, that oh Isa, I am going to raise you and take you completely. This is when the Jews and those who have plotted to kill Isa alayhi salam, they have surrounded his house. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring Isa alayhi salam that they will not harm a single hair on your body. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is assuring him. So what is he telling him? He says to him, if we take the second meaning, that I am going to give you death and I am going to raise you towards me. The meaning of this is yes, okay, we take the meaning of death because they say so. But however, the role is reversed. It means, number one, I'm going to raise you towards me. And then it means I am going to give you a natural death. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has mentioned death first is to refute the belief of the Christians. Because had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just said, I'm just going to take you. And he didn't mention death. Then the Christians, they would have got very happy. That look, Isa alayhi salam is a god. He didn't die. God doesn't die and he went to the heavens. As mentioned in some books that when Isa alayhi salam was taken to the heavens, there were three groups. One group of, from amongst them, they said that God was amongst us for as long as he will. And the second group, what did they say? They said that the son of God was amongst us for as long as God will. And the third group, the Muslims said, no, no, the messenger and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was amongst us for as long as he will. So had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not mentioned death, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, he's reassuring Isa alayhi salam, Jews are not going to harm you. However, when I raise you to the heavens, this day in the heavens, it is going to be temporary. It's only going to be for a while. Then you have to come back down on the earth and you are going to die normal and a natural death. So this is one of the meanings that you can find in the books of Tafsir for those who insist that this Quran ayat is referring to the death of Isa salam. And a point upon this that I will make is similarly in the ayat of Surah Al-Asra when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Subhanalladhi asra bi abdi He took his slave on the night journey. Now the Mufassirin a question is posed to them, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word abdi, his slave? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, he could have said bi rasulihi, bi nabihi, bi habibihi. He could have used different words. That Allah took his beloved, he took his messenger on the night journey. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here say his servant? There are many reasons for this. And I'll give you the two reasons. The first being that abdi, it is not a form of degrading the Prophet ﷺ, it is actually the best compliment that the Prophet ﷺ could have been given. The slave of Allah. Instead of calling his beloved, calling him his slave is the best compliment for the Rasulullah ﷺ. And I won't go into detail regarding that. But number two, why he said bi abdi is because there will be such people who come later on and they will say that when the Prophet ﷺ was on the earth, he was Ahmad. And when he was went to the heavens, the meme disappeared and he became Ahad. There are such people who say this. Na'udhu Billah, that the Prophet ﷺ, he himself was God. That whilst he was on earth, he was Ahmad. But when he went to the heavens, he became Ahad. He became one. He became the God himself. So to show that, yes, this was a miracle, but this was by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took him. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bi abdihi. Similarly here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we take the meaning of death, he is there to indicate the fact that Isa alayhi salam will one day die a natural death.